Well, hello, lovely listeners. Um, welcome to the Never Settle podcast. Today, um, I'm going to be sharing uh, the space here with a friend of mine called Guy Bevington. And the reason why I, I really was keen to get Guy on uh, the podcast is because we met a couple of years ago and uh, myself and Guy very much um, were on the same journey back then in terms of looking for alternatives. And Guy's done amazingly well in the last couple of years. And it, to me, is an inspiration um, in terms of somebody that truly has not settled for second best, which is obviously the theme of this podcast. And, you know, that's why I, I wanted Guy on, because he's, he's achieved in a shorter space of time, something that I'm still, still working towards. So I think, I think on that note, I'm going to bring you in, Guy. So thank you very much, Guy, for giving me your time this evening. Not a problem. What a lovely intro. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, <Liz. laughs> Yeah, it's been, um, it's just great to see you, mate. And, uh, you know, uh, it's great to share this space with you and, and find out, well, let the listeners find out more about you. Um, so, Obviously, in keeping with the theme of the podcast, um, if you want to give a little bit of backstory and sort of, you know, what was the thing that you realised that you were settling for? Mm, sure. Okay, thanks. Um, yeah, so I guess my, my kind of backstory, quite, you know, quite similar to really a lot of other people, I think, in life. Um, I, you know... I had a pretty decent upbringing. Um, I went to school. I kind of followed the traditional route, um, A levels, university. Uh, really, kind of just what you know. I guess I was, I thought I was supposed to do in life, um, and you know, got a degree uh, when I came out of, of uh, university. Didn't really have a clue what I wanted to do um, with with my life, to be honest with you. And a friend of mine. Um, just a guy I've trusted and I've known for, you know, since I was four years old, actually, you know, he said he was going into uh, the world of recruitment. And again, didn't really have a clue what recruitment was. Um, but as a younger man, I think I, you know, like a lot of people do, I equated happiness and success in life purely from a how much money do you earn point of view. You know, I thought that that was the lens really I was looking through my life. Uh, at and thinking that's, that's kind of what I needed to do to to be happy. Um, so yeah, I went to kind of research a little bit more about recruitment. I realised actually, you know, it's, it's a fast-paced sales industry. It is uh, it is possible to earn very good money doing it. Um, as I say, as a 23, 24 year old without a real kind of direction, um, I guess it kind of ticked a lot of boxes for me. Um, you know, did I think I was going to do it for the rest of my life? No, but I thought I'll give it a go. You know make a bit of money and, and see what happens um and that was in 2008 um about a couple of years into my career i joined um i was approached to join a startup business uh, by my previous director and um, so in 2010 i, I joined a, a recruitment company and kind of started that up with him um and you know for a few years i kind of i guess i kind of enjoyed it you know um as a younger man i was prepared to do the long slogs, you know, the 12, 13 hour days. Um, I kind of had the bit between my teeth. And like I said, you know, I just purely had the money blinkers on of thinking that I'll do whatever it takes to, to make a load of money because that's what's going to make me happy in life. And um, I spent really, well, the best part of 10 years at that company. Um, and I just got to this point about sort of five or six years in once I've made pretty decent money um where i no longer equated more money with more happiness uh, if anything it was probably the other way around because um every you know every um promotion i went for um you know, invariably i had less time on my hands i was more stressed there was more pressure yeah there was a little bit more money associated with it but at the end of the day i was i was less and less happy and um i yeah, the light bulb moment, I guess, for me came uh, when I was at work one day um, and uh, my wife sent me through a video of, of my baby daughter taking her first steps at home. And at the time, I was stuck in this meeting room listening to a meeting, which I literally could not have cared less about in terms of you know what they were talking about. It was so 
boring and just irrelevant to me in terms of how you know um, important life is. And uh, that was kind of the wake up call where I just realised I'm, I'm I've, I've missed that moment. You know, I'm never going to get that moment back. And that's what kind of made me just take stock and think, do you know what? Start looking at life through a different lens of, yeah, okay, it's important to have money. Of course, a lot of people do want to have money, absolutely. But um, it isn't the be all and end all. And it certainly shouldn't be at the sacrifice of, you know, your, your health and your happiness. And it was, it was getting to that point for me where it was really having a massive detrimental impact on my health. Um, you know, I've got gastritis a couple of times because uh, I was so stressed and you know, burnt out and just constantly running on empty because I was burning nervous energy the whole time because deep down, you know, my, my intuition was telling me I was in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing. And I was just sort of pushing that little voice further and further down. Uh, so it was having a real impact on my, my physical health, on my mental health as well. Um, and, you know, I actually think if I carried on probably doing what I was doing at the same company I was doing in, I probably would have had a breakdown at some point in, in the not too distant future. Um, so I kind of feel like I thankfully made the, or had the, the light bulb moment just before I, uh, I got to that point, you know, and I kind of had the breakthrough when I did. Um, and yeah, that was the kind of start of, uh, I suppose it's kind of awakening for me really of, uh, of just a reprioritization of what was truly important for me in life. Um, and you know, that's kind of where, that's kind of where I am today, I guess. So, so when you had that sort of that moment and your daughter taking her first steps, you're not there to see it and, and feel the experience. So obviously that, that was your wake up call. What, what happened next in terms of you thinking, right, well, I need to change this. So how the hell am I going to do it? Kind of thing. What did you do next? Yeah, good question. I mean, again, I didn't really know what I was going to do. The, the, um, I felt very trapped by my circumstances because I, the one skill set I had was in recruitment because that's what I'd done straight out of university. I've got 10, 11 you know, years experience doing it. Thankfully, I was pretty good at it. So I was making good money doing it. And, and as such, I've kind of created a lifestyle for myself. Um, where I had the trappings of, of success, I suppose, you know, kind of a, a decent house, a car, you know, all the kind of overheads and stuff that, that kind of go with it. And I'd made a lifestyle for myself really where I, I needed to be earning really good money because if I wasn't, it was going to have a real impact on, you know, the, all of the stuff that we, we have around us. So um, that was the real challenge for me and a real um, issue of, I didn't know what else I could do that was going to be able to replace my income um as 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 i was earning in in the recruitment uh world so um i i basically didn't make any kind of rash decisions or immediate decisions to you know just sort of throw in the towel because as i said i had a mortgage I've got kids I've got, you know i don't need to make sure that they were all um protected and, and didn't suffer too much as much as i would love to have probably at that time just handed my notice in and gone and taken a job being paid a third the amount of money but you know, probably had a bit more of a quality of life, you know, that would have been my, my ideal outcome. Um, but, you know, I didn't have that um, luxury, unfortunately. So um, I kind of just, you know, kept my eyes open really for, for types of opportunities out there that could give me a different, um, a different way to, to generate an income, I, I, I suppose. And um, I kind of made that transition, I guess, into the online space and the kind of digital entrepreneurial space. Um, by the thing that probably attracted me most about starting my own business and working for myself and transitioning away from being an employee to being an entrepreneur was the element of, of control, you know, control back of my time, control back of, you know, my life really, doing the things that I want to be doing more of, not being told where to be, you know, how many days holiday I can have every year, um, and that was probably the most important thing I wanted to regain control over. So I kind of knew deep down that I don't think I was ever going to be happy. You know, I was never going to settle working for somebody else uh, longer term because, um, yeah, whether it's, I don't know, a pride thing, an arrogance thing, I don't know, but I just, I, I hate the idea of somebody being my boss and telling me what to do. And, you know, I'm, I'm your boss and you've got to do this. It's like, I don't believe the world should work that way. You know, even when, I employ people, I, I don't see myself as their boss, you know. Um, so, yeah, I didn't really agree with that. So I uh, I just opened uh, my eyes and, and 
was watching a meditation video on the train on the way home when I was really mega stressed one day. And um, I came across a, an advert um, online on YouTube um, after I kind of fell asleep actually watching the meditation video. And then when I woke up, there was a, an advert playing. And I'm usually like the first person to skip past any advert on YouTube. You know, I think I've only ever clicked on one advert and it's, you know, the advert that kind of started this whole journey for me, in fairness. Um, and it was basically talking about, um, you know, an online business, the digital um, uh, marketing world. And, you know, again, didn't really know anything about it. Uh, but I decided to um, give it a look because, quite frankly, I agreed with the future of all business is going to be online, you know, so to learn more skills around that kind of area made sense to me. Um, and I also wanted a kind of a new challenge really to kind of invest in my education and, and do something different. Uh, so yeah, it all kind of made sense for me to sort of pull on that thread and start looking into, you know, maybe creating a, a different skill set for myself where I could generate a, a, a level of income outside of, um, you know, recruitment and, and that's what I did, you know, I kind of invested in my education. I joined a, a training academy, which, which is how we met, you know, in, in the same yeah the same academy yes I can and um you know that was two and a half years ago and that was kind of really I guess the start of uh you know the, this this journey for me to to kind of where I am now uh, today and you know don't get me wrong I'm still not the finished article it's still a long long way further for me to go but thankfully now I feel like I'm I'm truly living life uh more authentic and you know in a more genuine way true to myself and you know, that's kind of really what I was what I was looking for so, that, so even though you had that moment with your seeing your daughter's video, there was no like bash over the head, if you like, and that's it. The next day you've changed direction. It was more of a gradual, it, it had made you become more receptive to other ideas, basically. Yeah. Is what you're saying. And then at that point, that whatever period of time that was, you just happened to wake up when this advert was playing. You could call that divine timing couldn't you really yeah, yeah. And, and having meditated and having been asleep that's even better because you've given yourself a load of space from all the stress you had in the day and and therefore you were more receptive like you said you would never normally watch an advert but because you'd got space you you were more open to it and you you took notice yeah yeah, um, yeah i think um yeah, you're right. There was no kind of uh, immediate light bulb moment again. Cause I could, well, there was that moment, but I couldn't just sort of all of a sudden change tack. You know, it did have to be a slightly more um, subtle, gradual process. But yeah, I was definitely moving forward in that mindset where I was prepared to listen to it another way. And I, I think, you know, that that message has probably been around for a long time. If you know, work for yourself, there's yeah. a way to generate uh, money through the internet, you know, but I... I'm a firm believer that, you know, you won't hear the message until you're, you're ready to listen, you know, um, until one day you'll be in a mindset where that, that message will actually resonate with you. And, um, yeah, that, that was the, the mindset I was in that day for whatever reason, I kind of just had, had enough. And, you know, that, that video, I guess, was, um, was really the, I suppose, the straw that broke the camel's back, you know, if, if that's kind yeah. of what, what you want to call it. Yeah. So I think it's really, you, you know, valuable for the list any listeners that are listening to this at the moment because you know for people that are listening to this and feeling stuck in whatever it might be whether it's a, a career or whether it's a relationship or, or something else I think we're all you know certainly for me you know my my big settling was in my uh, relationship that turned into a marriage you know and I I was kind of waiting for that bash over the head you know that that moment where I could go, right, that's it, game over, I'm out of here. But of course, life isn't like that, you know. And it happened when it happened, and it happened like yours, more gradual, you know. And there was there was a particular moment, yours was seeing that, that advert. For me, it was something that was said in a conversation that left it wide open for me to be able to say what I needed to say, you know. Again, divine timing. So I think it's important for the listeners to to understand that because there are so many people like yourself you even though you knew you wanted to change your life you've still got the trappings of, of everything you've built up the mortgage the finance the car you know everything and and I, I understand all of that as well and people listening might be feeling exactly the same thing so I think it's really important 
the way you've explained how you've explained it because it doesn't have to be right that's it next day you change your life because that's not re that's not reality that's not practical it might be for the lucky few but it's unlikely so i think it's um i think it's really valuable for people to understand that you know once you've acknowledged and and admitted to yourself that you want to change something then life around you starts to change because you're you've changed your perception is changing and there yeah. and therefore things that you would have blocked out before or not taken any notice of you're now taking notice of so that's yeah. that's really good guy thank you no worries no i totally agree all, all change in life as much as we want it to be radical you know we want the miraculous to happen we all know really that success and and failure in all walks of life you know however you define it it happens through inertia of you know grad gradually day by day by day either doing the right things or doing the wrong things you know paying attention to what you should be paying attention to or or ignoring that little voice little little bit day by day by day and uh you know, that's how I genuinely believe that's how many people find themselves in, in a career, you know, kind of 10 years down the line. This is me, 10 years down yeah. the line. Like yeah. you, you wake up one day and you blink, you're like, what, what has just happened? Over <laughs> yeah, I know, yeah. Yeah. You know, it's gone like that. But yeah. it's, it's literally day by day, you kind of uh, keep your head buried in the sand. And uh, yeah, so I totally agree with that. So um, in terms of, obviously, there's, there's been a lot of change for you over the, over the last couple of years. What has been the best thing since you made that decision and you've started to go down a different pathway? What's been the best thing that's come out of it for you so far? Because obviously we're all on a journey. There's no destination. So what's been mm. the best thing do you think so far? Um, the best thing so far, I would say it sounds quite cheesy, but it is it was really kind of the biggest motivation I had to go on this journey. You know, when I watched that that video um i i didn't want to be um a dad that was just only present you know on birthdays and christmas and a couple of weeks a year um and genuinely the best thing that i'd say has come out of it is is thankfully i left my last my last job um and again this is another thing probably that will come on to that you know i was still having to whilst setting up my businesses on the side still having to do that whilst holding down a full-time job so there was a gap period where I was kind of doing both uh, side by side and I only actually got to a position where I left my uh, full-time job as of uh, July last year so you know it's still a relatively new thing for me to be purely out on my own as an entrepreneur um, but before um, our second daughter came along uh, Sienna in um, October last year on Halloween <laughs> uh, last year um, I took four months out uh, not doing any work not doing anything just to spend time with you know the family and and Heidi in particular before Sienna came along my, my first daughter you know, I kind of wanted to I knew that when um, Sienna came along it was going to be all hands on deck and it was going to be really you know manic again having a newborn baby in the house so I kind of wanted to use that time to really strengthen my relationship with her um, and yeah that is I do really feel that has happened you know I think we're, yeah. we're so closer now as a result um i look at our relationship i had with her when i was working full time and i'd come home and i'd have like 40 minutes with her before she went to bed if she was still awake you know sometimes she'd be asleep uh whereas now i've got a, a schedule where i get up, i mean i get up early still don't get me wrong you know it's not like just because i'm an entrepreneur you get to do what you want when you want but I get up early I do a couple of hours of work probably before the kids get up uh, but then I have an hour, eight till nine, where I will have breakfast with the family every morning. You know, then I'll go to my office or work, you know, which is actually only at the end of the garden. I've got an office there, so um, you know, I'll work there till uh, twelve thirty. I'll come back to the house and see the, the kids for and Becky for lunch. Uh, go back to the office, do a bit of work, come back and, and be there for their tea time and um, you know bath time and put them to bed. And you know, I'm, I'm lucky now that I'm able to do that every day and uh that is actually the best thing that's come out of this whole journey is just knowing now that if i drop dead tomorrow um i can do it with a degree of certainty that i've had a, a really big part to play in their lives so far you know obviously in the amount of time around but hopefully they'll uh, they'll appreciate that and you know they'll actually remember me <laughs> uh, versus you know if i'd still been in a full-time job they probably would have uh, 
who's this guy that kind of hangs around the house every so often, yeah, they probably wouldn't have really known who I was. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's, that's the best thing that's happened so far. Okay. So in terms of, um, you, you obviously mentioned about leaving your full-time job, um, well, God, eight, nine months ago now, right? Yeah. Um, so, and, and obviously you've got a couple of things on the go. So do you want to talk about um, the day that you were able to hand your resignation in, what it felt like, and also the, you know, was it scary, you know, in terms of this whole decision that you made to, to go out on your own? How did, you know, what was the highs as well as the lows? Um, how did it feel? I mean, I, when I actually, uh, left that company, um, it was under, uh, re relatively different circumstances, I guess, the normal people handing their notice in because it was kind of, uh, a, like a natural break, I guess, in terms of where I was with that business at that time. Um, but I'd already made the decision mentally a good sort of year or two before that, that this wasn't going to be my, my fate, you know, it wasn't going to be my destiny. In fact, if somebody told me that I'd have to carry on doing what I've been doing for the last 10 years, for the next 30 years, and I just literally, I don't know what I'd have done. I don't know, I could have, could have taken it, to be honest with you, it would have been too much. So I'd already made that decision of, you know, however it happens, whenever it happens, I'm, I'm going to be doing something else. Um, so it was kind of just like a, almost a culmination of the, the last kind of two and a half years of, of a journey that I've been going on. Um, and... Again, kind of going back to your 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 point, you know, your good point there about you know life isn't radically different from one day to the next. It's not like I was an employee and I was desperately miserable, and then I handed my notice in, and the next day I was just you know super, super <laughs> well, I was, everywhere, <laughs> yes, yeah, everywhere and infinitely happy. You know, um, it doesn't work that way because you know you you heard the whole um, another level, another devil, and it, it's true that you know every every kind of you always perceive the grass is greener when you're in that situation. There's always something there that's, you know, um, but uh, being an entrepreneur, there, of course, there is that element of, you know, oh, you know, shit, right, I've, I've found my notes and now I've got to go and make it on my own. There is that element of uncertainty, that element of fear, um, definitely as well. But, um, but deep down, all of the pros of, you know, the way I felt about um, not having to work there anymore massively outweigh the cons like even even like now right if i if i can sit here and readily say i could run out of money next month and i'd be all right with it because i know that i would find a way to you know find a solution because i'm, I'm really solutions orientated as a person now rather than problems focused um and uh, that's, that has happened as a result of going on this journey quite steadily for the last two and a half years and sort of getting that mindset and getting that mentality built up. Um, and I do feel, you know, just in the short time that I've actually not been working at that company, I've been working on my own businesses, working for myself, I do feel like I'm, and it sounds cheesy, but it's true, I feel like I'm growing as a person. I'm, yeah. I'm becoming more, more authentic yeah. as a person you know um, rather than where I was in my previous job where I was just having to wear a mask 24 7 you know like going into the office pretending to be happy pretending to be someone that I wasn't um, you know pretending to be all right with the you know the kind of level of control that, you know I, I, I didn't have over my life um, and now yeah I really do feel like again I'm not, saying not the finished article but I do feel like there's been that level of growth that's that's come off the the back of having the bravery to commit to a different way of life um and like i said there's still i'm sure so many more pitfalls that are going to come along the way of entrepreneurship i mean that is that is what being an entrepreneur is all about but i think just so much of it is the way you choose to respond to what's going on in your life and i don't know who said it actually but it is a really good quote that i kind of try and live my life by now it's like um well it's two two quotes i like one is um uh, living, living by the wrong rules is the hobgoblin of a, a foolish mind. So it's like saying, yeah, basically, if you're, if these are the rules and you've got to do these rules because these are the rules, you know, but actually, why are you enforcing a consistency of something that just doesn't make sense? And, and that, that was, that's something that kind of um, uh, really resonated with me. And um, what was the other one? I can't remember the other one. But uh, that is it's pretty much the same, the same quote. It's kind of like basically saying that, you know, 
you don't have to agree to do something you don't want to do. Um, it's totally, it's always going to be your choice. As much as it doesn't feel like it, it is always going to be your choice. And uh, that is something that I, uh, I do feel like now is, is true. You know, it's just about the way you, I know the other one is um, you can tell the mark of somebody by the, um, by the thing that they let bother them in life. And that's that's true, you know. So many people you see, you know, like I've got like members of my family that you know they'll just get worked up about the most minute thing, and it's like who's winning in that situation? Because you know, they're just feeling mega stressed. They're feeling mega negative about something. It doesn't change the outcome. Um, and I think you know there, there's certain times where I look back now where I think like the worst thing that could possibly have happened is me, uh, you know thinking about running out of money or what if I run out of money and you know then I have to give up my house and then other people are gonna make fun of me or you know there's gonna be that level of shame and it's like actually now all of these things that the, the the fears that I had when I was an employee working in a company they just they're not there anymore or, or you know I kind of I just don't let them bother me because I know that why would I you know it doesn't I'm not going to be in a state of empowerment I'm not going to be in my kind of best state of flow if I let these things get on top of me or bother me so rather than worrying about them think all right if they happen they happen but what's the solution you know and, and say sort of being more more solutions focused than uh, than problems focused so I just try well, however big the issue is now and the, the situation we're finding ourselves in obviously this COVID-19 outbreak is is a really good example of this you know how are people taking it you know some people are I mean it's horrible it's a horrible situation right how you kind of splice it and dice it but I do also think there are a lot of positives that can be drawn out of this as a, as, as a, as a species really as, as people, you know, kind of how we interact with each other and the things that we do hold dear in life and you know, kind of how we prioritize, um, you know, certain things in life. Um, so I do think there's a lot of, a lot of scope for growth, I guess, out of the back of this, but as uh, yeah, this is an example of, of something that probably two, three years ago, I might got really worked up about, whereas now, I'm kind of like, cool, we just take it day by day. I think that's all you can do and yeah. uh, keep, keep doing what you can at the time. So, uh, yeah. So, yeah. I, on a personal note, Guy, um, you, you've certainly changed in front of my eyes. Like when I met you a couple of years ago, you were very much the corporate, you know, um, person. And that was how you came across to me. But obviously I, I'm a corporate person. So we, we're, we mirror each other anyway, don't we? But yeah, I very much saw that, and I've but I've very much seen the change in you over the last sort of twelve eighteen months. Uh, a much softer, rounded um, person, you know that you've got more spiritual as well. Because I never really got that from you when I first met you. Whereas you definitely are, and you you know you use the language into in intuition earlier and and things like that. So it's just obvious that that's how you see the world now you know and it and it comes from you you know so um no, that's cool um yeah. so can you think can you uh relay if there are any any other changes that have come as a result of you making that decision really to to change your life anything else whether it be good or bad i suppose um i mean there's there's it is a, a totally different paradigm as to how I live my life now. And, you know, just, just it, the, everything is different now. Um, and as I said, that's not something that's kind of happened overnight, but when I do look at where I am now and what I do day to day and how I live my life and how I feel about things. And it, it, I am a different person to that person that was, was in that full-time job two, three years ago. I'm not saying I'm a miraculously better person, but I'm saying I do feel better now um, because I, I am actually just being more, say, genuine, more authentic and sort of listening to that that voice. And I think I, if that's one thing I could, um, I suppose, get across to, to anybody, you know, it's, it's something I'm really passionate about helping people with now. I don't think anything good can ever come from, like, not listening to that that voice inside, you know, because we, we all have it. Um and call it intuition, call it, you know, spirit, call it whatever you want to hear, call it, you know, it, it's there and it's, it's kind of giving us information for a reason, I guess, you know, and whether we understand what that reason is or not. Um, I, I became really, really good at almost a master of just ignoring that voice and pushing it down and pretending to be somebody I wasn't. And 
all right, from the outside looking in, I was, you know, successful to, you know, people in terms of I got the, got the nice car and, and, and decent money and all that kind of stuff. But inside I was, I was empty. Like I was genuinely empty and, um, no, nothing good can ever come of that, you know? Um, and I think that that is something that however kind of fearful people are of making changes in their life and, you know, I think you've just always got it. My, my best bit of advice to anybody now is even though it might not feel like, um, you know, it's going to be a thing that gets you the most money or the most uh, respect or whatever it may be. It's like, do what makes you happy because, you know, going back to your point a minute ago about me being more spiritual. I mean, I, I would, I'd say I'm definitely more spiritual. Um, I wouldn't necessarily, I'm kind of like overtly more religious or anything like that. But I just think that, you know, we're, we're, and this again, this this whole coronavirus situation has really put into perspective for me how, as people, we've had our sense of kind of normality, the rug just whipped out from underneath our feet. You know, we, we've we've had this whole, you know, we get up every day, we're just ingrained in what what everyday life is. Get up, have breakfast, go to work, you know, come back. You know, we've had like our our freedom really kind of taken away from us, and it's amazing how you know, everyday life that we call the rules that we call society's norms. They're just, they're just an illusion. They're not real. It's like we've constructed them in the same way that they've just been totally deconstructed in the space of like five minutes by this invisible virus, you know? So they're not real. And that's the thing. It's like, we're all living in this almost like dream world, you know, without getting too sort of kooky, but we're, we're agreeing to, you know, this sort of way of life and we don't have to necessarily and I think for, for me like and say going back to anybody that's worked up about certain things in life it's like we are on a, a rock floating through space and no one really knows why we're here no one really knows what our purpose you know of being here is in the first place we get 70 to you know if we're lucky 100 years of, of being on this planet and where is the value in spending the majority of that time miserable it just there just there is no value nothing good can come from that um you know and whether you believe in reincarnation or what not it's just like i i want to be able to look back on my life and feel i spent the majority of it being happy and you know being at peace kind of with with myself and what i'm doing um and that's what i really think other people um you know that's that's, that's a really good point guy um and actually i heard what you just said then triggered something I heard earlier on another podcast our default state when we're born is happiness but with all of the the labels the constructs the illusions like you said it's all been taken away in the last few weeks like that you know which proves how um, made up it all is and and we all put so much weight and importance on having to have the job, having to pay the mortgage, having to do this. This is the norm. This is what we should be doing. Having the 2.4 kids, getting married, all those sorts of things. And people just find themselves miserable as sin. And it, and they're like seeking happiness, you know, and I've been there, I, I, you know, none of us are, are immune from that. Um, but ultimately our default state is happiness. And all of the stuff we build around us, ourselves that we think we want or we should do creates unhappiness so you like you said take those away peel off those layers and guess what you're left with happiness again Mm. yeah totally agree totally agree um then i i was almost like for a long time sort of questioning like is there something wrong with me like why why do so many people enjoy what they're doing as a job you know how how is it me that's like this miserable and i came to the conclusion it's like it's not that they enjoy their job it's just that they're making the best out of a bad situation based yeah. on what they think they can do about it at that time. Um, you know, I, I, I'm not saying everybody doesn't enjoy it. Certainly there are some people out there that I'm sure do and you know, have vocations. And, but, but I think the majority of people genuinely, you know, this is why we have holidays. Like people yeah. need to take holidays away from yeah. this thing that they're doing every day because they don't enjoy doing it, you know, and that's, that's, that's the amazing thing. Like we, we have a holiday to, again, that's just another good phrase I heard. I think it was someone in the SFM that kind of um, posted it. But it's like, instead of going on a holiday to take a break from your life, how about creating a, a, a life that you don't need to take a break from? Yeah. And I think that's so true. You know, I was literally living for my holidays, um, max them out every single year. 
Um, I knew exactly what, what holiday I was going to take earlier on in the year. Because looking back now, I just couldn't wait to get out of, of the office. And I think that's how so many people still feel about their job. But they just see it as this, this necessary evil. And uh, of course, you know, we have to make an income. Of course, we've got to make money. But again, the way I look at that now is I don't need to make an income. What I need to do is, is serve other people. You know? um, I'd need to solve problems for other people it's not like i need to be paid xyz it's like if i'm good enough and resourceful enough at solving other people's problems um i'll get i'll get you know what i want in life and that's kind of the way i look at this whole entrepreneurial journey now and i think that's kind of a, a mindset shift as well away from being a, an employee to being an entrepreneur it's like you feel more empowered to help other people not because you're doing it for money course we all we all want to make money but it's um it's actually because you want to go to bed at night having had a genuinely you know authentic interaction with somebody and really helped them you know in a way that uh, is really meaningful to to you and to them um and that's something that again i, I don't think i ever had in 10 years of yeah. you know recruitment the other way when i was doing it was just doing it purely to make money whereas now it's actually about yeah sounds cheesy but it is about giving back and helping other people and um, in terms of, obviously, we've both been on a similar journey with SFM, as you mentioned earlier, which is the, the education platform and, and so much more than that. You know, there's a lot of mindset stuff and, and personal growth in there as well. And one of the things we both went through was a, a process where we got to understand what our um, purpose statement was. Hmm. Um, do you feel like having made that transition become your own entrepreneurial boss um that your purpose statement is at you are fulfilling that now do you feel that way um good question i mean i think purpose statement is i don't think anybody really goes around the world you know every day get up in the morning recite their purpose statement right. everything who is a purpose statement and um, so I think that for me going through that process of defining my purpose was really um important and it was it was a genuinely kind of life-changing uh thing to do because it's like it does give you that groundedness that sense of you know approaching things in a certain way and uh, sometimes I do I'm sure like a lot of people go down one route and then it actually helps to recenter me sometimes and, and I reread it and I think okay well now now I know that is my true purpose in life I really sat down and thought long and hard about it and, and defined it what what do I need to do in this situation and it kind of gives you a bit of that a bit of a compass I guess in terms of how you live your life so it's not like I um you know I live live and breathe it every single day and you know do everything purely around that purpose but it is something I feel resonates with me um and is it is the way i'd want to live my life if i could choose to so at times when you get that option in life to choose do i respond this way or do i respond that way it kind of helps give me that as i say steers steers the ship and gives me that kind of moral compass to do what i think is the right thing to do can you share what it is do you, do you have it to hand yeah so mine is uh serve others with love and respect so that they may gain inner understanding and peace allowing lives of fun joy and fulfillment yeah i'd say that's pretty bang on i mean for me the I, I wasn't too sure about the inner understanding thing but i think that actually the more i kind of um thought about it that actually is a really really important thing for me to help other people gain inner understanding because i was doing stuff that i didn't know why i was doing it you know i was kind of i was I want people to, you know, my whole tagline in my, my brand is, you know, GB, uh, Guy Bevington, and it's find yourself because I, I think everybody, um, everyone is different and everyone deserves to know who they truly are in life. Because as I say, if we're all following these rules, we're all becoming like carbon copies and clones of ourselves. Um, and again, that's never going to lead to true, true happiness and true fulfillment. And I think one of the great things about humans is that everybody is different and everyone has a different uh, perspective on life. And, you know, the only way you're going to live, live your true, uh, authentic life and you'll achieve your maximum potential is if you really understand yourself, the good, the bad and the ugly, you know, um, it's not all good, obviously. Um, but I think helping people really understand who they are, why they do what they do, why they've done what they've done in the past, you know, I think is, is a really big part of that as well. Cool. That's great. Yeah. That's, that's 
That's absolutely spot on. Um, so I suppose as we come to a close, um, if anybody's sat listening to this right now, feeling like they are settling or feeling like they're waking up to a situation or something that just doesn't make them happy in their life. Is there one thing that you feel would be poignant um, or appropriate to say for that person that sat there thinking, whether it be a career or a relationship or whatever, is there one thing that you'd like to sort of get across? Um, yeah, I think it certainly the first thing I would say is you're not alone. You know, um, absolutely everybody in life has problems. Um, and by the very nature of a problem, it's it's kind of giving you, I suppose, a little bit of a, a flashing beacon of something in your life that perhaps you should be doing something about. Um, so rather than worrying about it and thinking, oh, it's this problem I can never do anything about, it's like, well, you know, think about it logically of, okay, well, what? what can I genuinely do in this situation? And like we said you know, quite a few times in this chat, it's not, it's not maybe be a radical thing that, you know, you just immediately have to do something right here, right now. But what's the, what's the one thing you can do today to possibly slightly improve that situation? And yeah. um, guess again, that's one thing I've realized is, you know, we, we're only, we don't, we only ever have now this moment right here, right now. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, yesterday's gone. We're never getting that back. Tomorrow, that's a bad guess about what what the future's going to look like. And then when tomorrow arrives, it's going to be today anyway. So we all spend so much time worrying about you know the, the shame and the guilt of the past and and the fear and the anticipation of the future. Whereas you know, if we could just in this moment, right here, right now, just make a small decision about okay what's what's something i can do to just improve slightly improve this this situation that's really bothering me at the moment what can i do and you know if you keep making small and consistent decisions in the right way in life you will eventually get the results the, the right results that are in line with those those small decisions you know um it's like anybody that goes that wants to go to the gym and get a six pack set of abs you're not going to go and do that in two hours. You know, you've got to literally every day make the small decision of, right, okay, well, I am going to go to the gym today and I'm not going to eat that Mars bar. And, you know, if you do that five times a week, by the end of the week, you, you're in, going to be in a better place. At the end of the following week, you're going to be a better place. And they're just little, little decisions that you make on a daily basis, which added up make the difference between winning and losing over time. So, I think a lot of people when they've got a really, and I was definitely in this boat, when they've got a really massive problem on their plate, which was me was my job, you know, it's, it seems like a mountain in front of you, like a massive mountain to climb. And you think, I can never get to the top of this mountain. There's no way I can ever do anything about this. It's just, this is the way it is. This is where it's going to be. And that's kind of the way I, when I felt quite hopeless and quite trapped and quite desperate and, and miserable, uh, was because I just didn't think there was a way out. I was like, shit, what am I going to do? You know? Um, but it's only when I started to think, right, okay, just open your eyes to, to maybe some slightly different way of living your life. Um, you know, and then that kind of led to me hearing a message, which led to me watching a set of videos, which led to me reaching out to somebody, which led to me investing in my education, which led to me, you know, eventually starting my own business and, and doing what I am now. And it's all, it's all pulling on that thread. But that didn't happen in 24 hours. That happened over a period of two and a half years. Yeah. Um, and even in the grand scheme of things, two and a half years is nothing. You know, there's obviously, hopefully, a long, a long, long, longer to go. So, don't let the big uh, problems sort of face you down, and just think that you know, however you may not feel like it at the moment, you are always in control, and you're only ever one decision away from changing your future. Um, and you're not going to change your future drastically in one decision, but it's that little decision you make in this moment in time. And then you make the next little decision added up. That will be the difference between cracking your problem and, and not, if that makes sense. Yeah, I love that. that that's, that's absolutely brilliant. And while you were talking, I was just thinking about, you know, the people that do, that do get catapulted into a change. For example, you know, somebody like Justin Bieber, for example, one minute he's on YouTube, the next minute he's a global sensation. Or 
people that win the lottery that didn't have a pot to piss in and then all of a sudden have got 10 million pounds and they tend to lose it. And it's because they are not ready. They haven't done that journey to get there. Whereas you mm. have, and you know, and I'm, and I'm still on my journey and all the rest of it, but to, to go from that to that is, is impossible anyway, because there's no, there's no real adjustment. Is there? you, you like flailing in the wind. Such a great example. Yeah. If that, if people thought money was happiness, why do we have miserable uh, lottery winners? Why do we have people that famous, rich and famous people that, you know, unfortunately commit suicide or take their own lives? You know, it, it isn't, the money is not the happiness. No. But if you are genuinely authentic with yourself and genuinely living a life of purpose and passionate about what you do, money, I believe, will be the byproduct of, of, of that purpose, of that passion. You know, um, so yeah, I totally agree with you um, that that many flooded into a situation where someone hasn't the right mindset to to actually deserve that money. You know, they will be miserable or they will lose it or whatever. So I think um, it's looking at it that way around rather than I need the money to be happy. It's like, well, let me be happy first and then maybe I'll get the money. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, God, it's been so great catching up with you. It's been too long. Thank you, mate, as always. Um, right, so if um, if people want to find out a little bit more about you, um, I'll put this down in the show notes. Um, this is my first proper episode, so I've got to figure that bit out as well. But anyway, um, no, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so where can they find you, guy? Um, what you what you up to? Uh, well, I usually hang around, uh, you know, uh, Orpington on a week. Well, not anymore. I don't hang around anywhere. I hang around in the back garden. Well, um, but um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm on. I'm on. All, all major social media platforms. Um, so yeah, YouTube. If you if you literally Google Guy Bevington, you'll find my um, Scrap the Rat Race uh, channel. Um, I am on LinkedIn as well, um, which is um, basically my kind of uh, platform for my recruitment business. So uh, yeah, on there I'm on Facebook, Instagram. So just uh, reach out if you if you want to have a chat about anything. Okay, and Scrap the Rat Race is your affiliate website, which is where. Yeah, so Scrap the Rat Race is my affiliate marketing business, um, which is the first business I started as a result of the SFM education to kind of remarket the SFM. And then using the SFM education, I, um, you know, basically, as I say, started thinking more like an entrepreneur and, yeah. and basically formed my own, uh, my own recruitment business uh, alongside that. So kind of, you know, working working on both uh, pretty concurrently but you know the great thing about my affiliate marketing business is it's pretty automated so it doesn't actually require a huge amount of my time anymore um so it kind of frees my days up to to focus on uh, on my recruitment business as well brilliant well you're an absolute star guy thank you so much for your time today no worries thank you very much for having me and when this uh, madness is all over um as in corona um, yeah. we shall we shall meet up again sir at some point we shall and I will very much look forward to it alright thank you very much see you soon see you soon bye bye